This video is brought to you by Treadless. My name is Asia Sampson, and today on Baptism Overland, we are talking first aid kits. What's going on, everybody? Today we are talking first aid kits. Now, if you follow my channel, then you will have seen that I've done different kinds of first aid kits, different kind of mounting, different ways I've had it. First aid kits have been the bane of my existence because I've never really known how to pack them. Sometimes I don't bring too much and sometimes I bring way too many. And I am trying to make it so that it's turnkey, so that I have the kind of gear that has everything I need when I need it. And what happened was, Treadless decided to send me these two first aid kits for the rig, and they are from my medic. If you are not aware, my medic is a leader in the industry when it comes to first aid kits. They have awesome, awesome kits, and they have ones that are bigger than this. They have one for marine applications, and they have a bunch of stuff. So I'm so glad that Treadless decided to send me this stuff to uh, review because it is National Preparedness Month. And so with National Preparedness Month, I figured let's talk first aid kits and with me today is my friend BJ. He's a physician, but he hates when I call him doctor. Like he doesn't, <laughs> he's always like, stop doing that. He's a physician and formerly the director of the ER at our local hospital here, which is why I'm glad he's here because we're going to walk through these kits together. We're going to see what is in here because I haven't even opened these yet. So we will see the type of stuff that my medic provides and if there's things that I can add to it because you can build from these. So this is how I'm setting it up in the rig, right? I always had big ones, but then every time I needed something small like a band-aid, I had to go through this whole thing just to get a band-aid. So that's why I asked Treadless to send me two versions, the Solo, which is what this is, and then my FAK, which is what this is. What I'm going to do is this one's going to be closer to the driver so that if I just need something simple like a band-aid or whatever, it's close to me and I can just grab it really quick. But for more crazier situations, then I can go to the back and pull this out. So this is why I like this. I'm going to show you. Want to see what's cool? Want to mm -hmm. see what's cool? Have you seen these before? I've never seen these before. Have you ever even heard of my medic before? Never heard of my medic. Ah, look at that. So you may want to look into it and get some for you if, if it's... Up to your standards, of course. <laughs> but so this is what's cool, right? So you can put this on a molly panel um, in, your, in, your, in your rig, and uh, you just strap this on. And what it is is you, you, you mount this somewhere on your vehicle, and then when you need it, instead of having to unmount everything in the back, you just do this. Take the clip off, and then check this out. Take that off, and then this rips off of this. I'm holding that. So. So this stays mounted. Oh. It stays mounted and then you just pop it back on and it'll hold. And then once you have it mounted back on, close it back up and then it just stays that way. So this is really, what I love about this is quick grab and go. Like, okay, there's an emergency, unplug it all and then pull this from the base. Well, I think one of the, one of the things I'm already liking about it is the, is the packaging of it and accessibility. Anytime you're in a, an emergency, you want to be able to just grab, go, grab what you need, and access it quickly. So I'm already liking the way that it's packaged. You said to me before that if a first aid kit is not bursting at the seams. Oh, I, I did say that. You did say that. Right. I think from my standpoint, more is always better because you never want to be stuck in a situation where you don't have what you need. So if, it, if when you open it, if stuff doesn't fly out at you, you probably don't have enough. There you go. I will say this, when you go camping, overlanding, outdoor, hiking, whatever it is you're doing, there are two types of situations that are gonna happen. You're gonna get injuries that you can continue with the trip, and then there are <laughs> trip ending injuries that you have to, you, you, just everything stops, and you gotta get somebody to the emergency room. But, there are certain things that you know you have to do to, I guess, what keep them stable. Well, yeah, we always talk about the ABCs of emergency. So if your airway is compromised, if you're no longer breathing, or if your circulation has is to a point that you have to get to an emergency room. Obviously, broken bones probably right. will end the trip, depending on what bone it is. Um, but yeah, those are the main things: airway, breathing, circulation, the ABCs of emergencies. So even if their bones are broken or they're bleeding, so long as they're still breathing. 
Then you so can, long as they're still breathing, you should be okay to get to an ER. To get to an ER, yeah. yes. And then what would be the next thing you would tackle after, okay, they're breathing, what would be the next thing that would be like the next down the Yeah, make sure they still have a pulse, make sure that you're not you know, bleeding out to death, make sure your circulation is still intact. Okay, so let's go through the big one and then we'll go through my, my personal one that I use just for really, really minor stuff when I need something quickly. So it opens this way. So it opens like that. Okay. And it opens like that. So where should we start? Well, I think first the way that a trifold, because I always say if things aren't busting out when you open it, uh, then you don't have enough. But this is actually a really good way to pack a lot of things and still keep it nice and neat. Yeah. And so. what my medic does a lot is they do a lot of color coded stuff. Like you'll see like light green here, you'll see yellows, um, you'll see light blue, you'll see purples. Like there's a reason why they have it all color coded. If you go on their website, you'll be able to see what each color code means. Mm -hmm. um, so starting with the really small pocket here, gloves. Gloves. One pair, two pairs of gloves. Always important. All right, next one. See, okay. Let me tell you, my, so my wife works with BJ, right? They, um, they both work in the ER. My wife knows gauzes and stuff, but a lot of times I go on trips by myself and I don't have my wife or any medical professional near me, right? It's just me and my son. And I'm always confused when it comes to like gauzes. Like my, I'll put something on, my wife is like, uh, that's not for absorbing, that's for splinting or that's for this. <laughs> and so I'm hoping BJ will clear up some stuff. So what is- Well, that's tape. Okay, so this is just regular tape. That's just regular medical grade tape. If you have a wound and you need to keep it covered without having to actually hold it, you can, you know, you obviously would always want to have some tape. Okay, so that's not for absorbing anything. Mm -mm. Uh, we have tools and devices. I should just open this stuff. So let's see, what do we got? Thermometer. Thermometer. This would be um, the, the peel pack so you put on the thermometer, right? Right. Yeah. So it's always important to have a sleeve because if you want to check your uh, temperature rectally, you obviously wouldn't want to stick that in your butt directly without having a sleeve or something, so. Yes. Well, you can put it in your butt and then just don't. Okay, now I'm going to check your temperature orally. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's so not going to happen. You don't, if you do have to do it in two uh, locations, you probably want to start with the mouth and end with the butt, <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> See, these are things I would never even think about, but okay. <laughs> There's a whistle, if you're in trouble, whistle. You should give all your patients whistles and then they just whistle whenever they need someone to come. It's called a call bell, yeah. they have it <laughs> and they use it. Tweezers, okay, so that's always good. Oh, um, definitely. They're good for grabbing little small things but not really good for holding tissue, so. Uh, another short story, my son, being my son, put stuff in his ear like it was Play-Doh one time. It's not too long ago. And this is the guy, him and my wife took it out because my wife was attempting to do it at home. And she was like, you don't know how to hold him. I'm like, I'm holding him. He's like, that's not how you hold mm -hmm. someone when we need to remove stuff, especially with kids. And he was like squirming on me. And Jessica's like, we're taking him to the ER. Mm -hmm. So she took him to her work and she was the one that held him while he removed it. And I was like, you guys are crazy. Like Death I wouldn't grip. even know what Death to do. Grip. Um, what is this? This is- So this is a pin light. Basically to check uh, your pupils oh, to see cool. if it really reacts to light. So, and they actually, which is really good, they actually have the size of the pupils uh, could possibly be. So that if you need to call 911 for any reason and relay that information, you can actually use that as a guide. So, yeah. Whoa, that's cool. I, they added a pen light. That's awesome because I know the, the regular kids don't have it. I might have to buy some of this stuff to put into there. So, let's open this one because we didn't get to open it earlier just so we can see what exactly is in this wound kit. Um, so we have here, that is the liquid skin, yeah. right? That's the, like the dermabond, right? Mm -hmm. So tissue adhesive is really good. Speaking of which, we went to the Narrows in Zion about a couple months ago. And I always bring a first aid kit no matter what. And I had uh, one of these, a small, another version of this in my backpack. And I was climbing a rock and scraped my knee. Wasn't bad, but you know, it, there was blood. Um, and so my wife went through the kit and found like this adhesive type of thing. But we had the stronger Thermabond. 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 And we put that on there. My wife is like, that's going to be on you for like a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And for weeks, I thought it was getting infected. <laughs> She's like, that's not infection. That's just the adhesive 
like getting crusty and mm -hmm. you know getting brown. It looked gross, you guys. It looked nasty. But um, the cut wasn't even big. But you know what? It was awesome because band aids tend to fall, like you, you were, we were walking in water, right? Yeah. And so you put on a regular Band-Aid, that thing's just going to fall off. But the Thermobond, like, protects it and stays on there, like, permanently. And so I like, I like this stuff. So sometimes those liquid adhesives are, like, much better, I think, than, and it's easier to use, too, mm -hmm. right? You just Definitely. Yeah. And here is, okay, see? So stuff like this is when I start to get confused. Whoa. Super strips. That... Now this will actually close wounds that are much larger than, than the mini wound, actually. Yeah, so the, the adhesive is usually for small wounds. Like it's not gonna keep your skin closed if it's gushing out, right? right. You wouldn't use this. This is really more for like a small cut. You don't wanna have to put a Band-Aid. The liquid skin is what's good. But that yeah, one is... Yeah, so this, it says super strips on here, um, but it's sort of, you know, the, the medical grade version of, of, of a butterfly. So it. Basically, you creates tension on wounds so that it can close the wound. So this is really good. This is actually medical grade. That's good. So see, that's a plus. That's awesome. So my medic is already so far doing well with what they're. Because here's the thing: I've bought a lot of kits too from like Amazon, and mm -hmm. you know they're super cheap, ten dollars whatever for a first aid kit. Um, I have one right here actually, and. Um, they're just your run of the mill. Like my wife would look at those kits sometimes and say, "Oh, we could have just gone to the nearest grocery store and got these and filled, made it ourselves." Um, but first aid kit comes at a premium. They, their their stuff is a lot higher up, and so it's good to see the reason why. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. This is a great kit so far. Okay, next one is sprain and fracture stuff. Let's open and see what's in there. Again, this is where I start to get confused. This is a super wrap. Okay. Another super wrap. Okay. Compression bandage. A finger splint. Wonderful. Definitely good if you, uh, finger splints are definitely necessary because you get a lot of finger injuries either if you fall because um, you're always going to use your hands to brace your fall. That's just a natural reflex. So most of the time when you fall, you're gonna injure your hands uh, just as a natural reflex. And so having a finger splint just in case you pop it out of place is really good. So that's perfect. So there you go. And then, so then what do these do? This is compression uh, bandages. So if you need to wrap it around an extremity, your arm or your leg to control bleeding, that's a good thing to have. Triangular bandage. Triangular bandage is, is something that you use if you wanna create a splint. So if you hurt your shoulder and you need to splint your arm, this is a special bandage that's kind of shaped like a triangle. Oh. And so. Oh, so you don't have to do the whole wrapping right. thing. You so just you can use it, open you can sort of create a makeshift uh, sling for your arm if you injure your shoulder or your elbow. Perfect. So there's Love that. that. Next one, we've got instant cold pack. So, so that's actually what you would use before you went into this kit. The sprain and fracture kit is obviously you want to apply some sort of cold compress to an injury because number one, when it's cold, sort of acts as an anesthetizing agent and it also causes vasoconstriction. So it restricts your blood vessels, decreases bleeding, decreases pain, so yep. We've got, oh, hydration packets. You just drop that in some water. So hydration is an important thing when it's- Always, uh, yeah. Outdoors, it's a huge thing. Like that's the one thing, you know, you, the body can survive without food for how many days? Uh, you can go six months without food. You can only go three days without water, so. This is CPR shield. Oh, that's to put on someone's mouth or on your mouth or someone's mouth. <laughs> right? Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> because in the wilderness, we're taught to just wing it. If somebody's not breathing, mouth to mouth it is. So it's obviously some people, a focus group tested this to say, uh... <laughs> Can you get us something? <laughs> <laughs> you just insert that into their mouth and then you push you... air through it. So yeah. Oh, got it. So you don't have to put your mouth on them. Oh, you probably don't have, you don't have to do mouth to mouth. You just mouth to plastic. Got it. Burn mods. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna open this because I can see from here, hydrogel and emergency burn care dressing. Obviously, if you're out uh, in, the, in, in the wilderness and you have a campfire, burns is something that uh, is, can be common. And so putting a hydrating gel because burns ooze lots of liquid and so you just wanna make sure you stay hydrated with that. It also creates a little bit of, uh, Analgesia for pain too. Beautiful trauma shears. Got to have trauma shears. That's the thing. It is so accessible. It, we, it, it's so important to have trauma shears that a lot of the medics, a lot of ER staff, 
actually have literally have them on their waist so that they're easy, yeah. easily accessible. So trauma shears is definitely a must. And I know a lot of people in the medical field, they carry that with them every day, no matter where mm -hmm. they go, they always have trauma shears with them. So I like to build on this one. I think this one is nice and robust looking versus some of the plastic ones that I just get like on some of the cheaper first aid kits. So definitely that. If you don't have a pair of trauma shears in your first aid kit, make sure there's one in there or, you know, just carry it on your persons if that's something you want to do. Over to the last section here, super wash, uh, what is that? So we're probably getting into the wound care uh, part. Um, so you wanna have super wash for two reasons, to either clean a dirty wound or if you get, so get something in your eye and you need to wash out your eye, definitely you wanna have super wash available. You can just squirt it in your eye and, and rinse out your eye. Awesome. Getting getting sticks and dust and debris in your eye is something that's common, actually. Blister mod. So when you're hiking and you're wearing boots, you obviously would get blisters on your toes or on your heel or on the bottom of your foot. So having something that can cushion and protect that blister so you're not re-injuring your skin is oh. definitely important. That's good. I have tons of blisters right now on my feet. Uh oh. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> space blanket. So this is in case you are a, an, an astronaut. <laughs> and you want to go into space and you get cold, you have a blanket for space. No. Space blanket, this is vital too because hypothermia. Yeah, hypothermia right? is very, very common. Yeah. So um, it's a rescue blanket, reflects 90% of body heat in emergency situations. We've gone camping many times. We went camping. <laughs> I took them camping. For the he went camping for the first time with my wife and I on my birthday. Mm -hmm. And it just happens to be the coldest day we've had down here. It was super windy, and it was so bad that even I couldn't do it, and I camp a lot. And I looked at him, I'm like, this is not how camping usually goes. <laughs> Believe me. But it was freezing. So imagine in that kind of a cold, I believe it was like, it went down to like 20s. Um, imagine if it was that cold, and you were hiking and fell into the water or something, right? Your hypothermia will, will come in really quickly. Very so cool. having a space blanket like that to reflect, you know, to reflect your body heat back in will help keep you warm. I'm really sorry about that still. No, it's okay. We're gonna try it again one day without you. I could have gone the whole weekend. <laughs> so medication mod. So in here you have ibuprofen, uh, fever reducer, aspirin, uh, diotame for diarrhea, nausea. Uh, Dramamine, motion sickness. Mm -hmm. My wife brings that with her a lot when we go on like boating trips. I would definitely trips. need that. Dramamine is, yeah. Um, Dyphen is what, allergy? It's probably like a Benadryl or yep. a Diphenhydramine, yep. Um, Diamode, mm -hmm. which is for anti-diarrhea. So what's the difference between diatame, diarrhea, nausea versus diamode, anti-diarrhea? So if you're having diarrhea, this will stop it. Okay. Okay, and then diatane probably is just more, more so for nausea, like a queasy stomach, maybe like a Pepto-Bismol equivalent. Okay, and then you have your cold and flu meds, cold and fever reducer. So all your little packets are in there. I can't take aspirin, um, but I can take ibuprofen. So actually, no, I can take uh, acetaminophen. I can't take ibuprofen or, um, or aspirin. So I'm going to have to put some Tylenols in here because I don't see any acetaminophen. Mm -hmm. on this kit at all. So if you are allergic like me to aspirin and ibuprofen. Oh, wait a second. Or do they? Yep. APAP. APAP oh, is that what that is? Yep. That's the uh, oh, abbreviation see? for Tylenol. Oh. Acetaminophen, yep. Look what I learned. So yeah, I guess my medic did <laughs> cover that. They're like, we got you. Don't worry. You don't got to add stuff. Good. Look, I'm going to look like the idiot in this whole video, believe me, because this is not my specialty. I failed biology and I failed health in school. Like, it was just not my thing. So that's why I'm so glad he's here. If a lot of you are watching this video and going, you know, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't. I'm going to say that right now. I really don't. And that's why he's, well, he's here. Me. Because I need to know how to use this. It's important for me to know if I'm not out with my wife or with anybody. I need to know what I have in my kit. Clean and prep mod, which is uh, basically uh, iodine prep pads mm -hmm. and some topical stuff. So this has four antiseptic wipes, uh, four hand sanitizers, and one iodine prep pad. Iodine. Iodine prep, prep yeah. pad. Yeah. So that's basically just to uh, keep, keep wounds clean, get all the bacteria out of there. 
So yeah, you know pretty what? standard actually for. Uh, uh, although I've never seen iodine in a, in, a, in a first aid kit, but you know, alcohol swabs and hand sanitizer is pretty good. And you never want to put iodine inside of a wound. You always want to put it on the outside of the wound. You want to cleanse the skin and make sure you get that nice and clean and sterile. But you never want to stick iodine inside of a wound. I'm learning so much. <laughs> Treatment and relief mod. Let me see what's in here. We've got three triple antibiotics, uh, two mm -hmm. lip balms, two sunscreens, Perfect. two sting relief, uh, one white petrol petrolatum. Oh, okay, so petroleum jelly, basically. Like a moisturizer. Um, two hydrocortisone itch relief, two mm -hmm. oral pain relief, uh, you know, mouth toothaches, that mm -hmm. type of thing, right? Uh, one ammonia towelette and one chafing cream. I'm so that's just, yeah, that's just regular maintenance things. Obviously, nothing in that part is going to help be, be life-saving. But it's, it's more just, for, you know, relief. For, for care and relief. You know, obviously, your lips get chapped if you're out in the sun. You, sunburns are very uncomfortable and can be blistering at times. So having some sunscreen is good. I'm, cha uh, I'm chafing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bleed gauze. Three 2x2 two two gauze pads. Two 4x4 four four gauze pads. Three non-adherent gauze pads. Two mm -hmm. non-adherent gauze pads. Mm -hmm. One two-inch conforming gauze roll and one three-inch conforming gauze roll. That's where I get start to get confused with gauzes. Okay. Well, we're going to tease through that. Okay. So I like that it's red because obviously red not only red. is for blood, but also red should signify importance. And so in the ABCs of trauma, airway, breathing, circulation, part of circulation is not only making sure you have a pulse, but also making sure that you're not bleeding to death. So, and that your circulation is good. So this is very, very important. So you always want to make sure that you apply, use these gauze and apply compression to stop the bleeding. And the, the really good thing is non-adherent gauze pads. Have you ever had a wound that you put gauze on and then you had to take the gauze off and yes. it sticks to the wound? Yeah. It's oh, very... oh, is that what that means? <laughs> yes. Okay. So these are gauze that actually you can apply to a wound and then you can just remove them and they won't stick to your wound. Oh, good. Because when you pull gauze off that sticks, it's not only painful, but you can also pull off Re the scab, yeah, you can pull off the clot, and then you, know, you can start bleeding again. So that one is considered the my FAK, and that runs, I believe it's like 100 or so dollars, 110, something around there. I'll put all the links in the description below. And then this one is what they call their solo kit. I like this because I actually have three of these. Um, one I bring for traveling, when I'm traveling by plane, mm -hmm. I keep one in my backpack um, because you're, you're not gonna do, most times when I'm traveling by plane, you're gonna land somewhere or be in a place where, okay, the hospital's not far. You're not out in the wilderness. But if I need something, like when I'm on a plane and I get a cut or something, I have stuff in here. But also I bring this hiking, right? Because you can bring something like this hiking if you don't mind it being this bulky. Um, but this is good for like, you know, for your, for in the vehicle type of situations. And then this one is the more portable one. So I have this because I keep it near like in the glove compartment or I have it on my overhead molly panel because sometimes I just need something quick, right? Like sometimes I get a cut and I need to put something on it or I need allergy meds, you know, because I'm getting, suddenly I got bit or something and I'm getting hives. Um, so that's why I have this because then I don't have to dig through this entire kit here just to grab something. So if you don't really want a full blown kit, which my medic does, my medic has humongous ones. They have bug out bags if you want. That has everything from not only medicine, but also they have um, water filtration stuff in there. They have, you know, gas masks in there. Like they have a bunch of stuff that like in a, in a you know, SHTF situation, um, you can just take that bag and go and not have to worry about anything. Like some of them have extra beanies and extra gloves. Mm -hmm. So like if you get cold, they have like apparel in there for you to use. Um, so, but this is what I like to carry just for daily stuff and quick grab type of situations. I just need like a Band-Aid or something. So let's go through what's in here and let's see, because I know I'll definitely be adding to this. So again... Super wash. All right, same tweezers. A lot of the stuff, it's all about redundancy, right? It's good to have multiple um, things scattered across all your kits because you, you'll need them, right? So another pair of, of tweez tweezers there, another whistle, and then this one is also the liquid, uh, the, 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 um, the liquid skin. So they give you one of those. So that's cool too. I'm telling you, this stuff is great. 
Like, I, that was the first time when I got that cut that I've ever had like derma, derma bond or mm -hmm. liquid skin type product on me. And I'm like, I will choose this over a Band-Aid any day because it just stuck and it yeah. never got infected. It was, it was awesome. Imagine, we were, on, we were in De Nero's and they say that sometimes there are, sometimes bacteria can be in that water, right? And so the fact that I got a scrape on my knee, if I didn't cover that right away, I could have been walking Bacteria mm -hmm. would have made its way inside that wound, and so the thermobond, the dermabond, really helped with keeping it sealed up. So even if I'm still treading through water, it's not gonna get like I felt numb too. Like water would rush through, and the water was cold. I felt it everywhere except the spot where I had my cut. Like you could tell there was something there yeah, without it being because you also get a really good seal with that versus um, a band aid where it can still seep in yeah. through the band aid and stuff. Well, your so. skin acts as a natural barrier, so you basically it's liquid skin. Yeah. So it, it should act as a barrier, you know, for, to the elements. Yep. Another pair of um, of shears, but trauma shears. This important. one doesn't feel as you could feel it, but it doesn't feel as like premium as the other one, right? Yeah, but it would cut clothing. I think I'm going to replace that, though, with a Leatherman one, just because I like their Leatherman multi-tools. Uh, but, in a, you know, you have one in a pinch, yeah. right? So, cordage. Rope. Tourniquets. Unless you are literally uh, have lost a limb, that would be the only reason why you would ever want to use a tourniquet. So, and last resort. Like if, you, like, if literally your body's here and your leg's over there. Um, but, yeah, we don't usually like to decrease blood flow to uh, extremities. Conforming gauze. <laughs> what is conforming yeah, gauze? Yeah, so that would just basically wrap around a wound, just to wrap around. So sometimes you have wounds that you just need to apply pressure, and sometimes you have wounds that actually you need to wrap. And so okay. that's what you would use that for. Again, this is not going to be your ultra survival kit. It's just you need it in a pinch. So on the other side, we've got... Your medicine, so ibuprofen, diotame, same thing we talked about before, but just a not as many. So this I'll have to add on to. I'll yeah. have to add my own uh, medicines, which I really don't need to do because I have a whole canister of meds that I take in the Jeep already that's in my glove box that I just pull out when I need like headache medicine or Benadryl. It's not an emergency thing, so I don't necessarily need to keep it in here. So sting relief, uh, super skin, again, another super skin, and super sanitizer. One pair of gloves versus this two. One. Super strip, That's again. A, a so I'm great glad. Great that it's in the, even the smaller version. Love that. Okay, and then here you also have burn shield, antibiotic, heart, hydrocortisone, and um, what is this big one in the back? Sun X30, oh, sunscreen lotion. Mm -hmm. So these are your burns situation packet here and then a bandage pack as well which has all your assorted bandages and yeah so that's it so this is a cool thing to have i think for mm -hmm. hiking and they, but, and they still have it pretty pretty well organized actually so it's kind of in two halves life's life-saving medications uh and some minor wound care and management so it's, it's perfect for what you need for something like a singular travel that's travel right. pack so it's not going to obviously have everything that you would need in here but it has, it has the basics, and yep. I think of all the things that are in here, if you wanted to consolidate it to something quick, it definitely has. You can always put it in here. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what's, what I like about this too is when my medic gives you this, there's not much in here. They leave a lot of room because they know you're probably going to want to add your own stuff mm -hmm. to it, which I plan to do. But basically, that's my, that's my first aid kit setup. Your needs might be different. You might want the more comprehensive, bigger ones. What I like to do, especially if you're traveling in a group, is have somebody that is dedicated, you know, when you have a caravan of people going camping or overlanding, you know, one person might do all the food, another one might have all the recovery gear, and then another one would be your medic, basically, who will have the bigger kits and have more stuff. If you're traveling alone, then you really don't have any options, but when you have a bunch of people, utilize that so that one person is in charge of this, another person is in charge of this, that way you're not all bringing duplicate gear with you for no reason. So if someone is in charge of all the food prep, then there you go. And then someone is in charge of recovery for the vehicle, you know, your, your winches and your toe, you know, your toe straps and, and all that other stuff, then that person will be in charge of that. And then you have the guy who's your medic who will have way bigger kits than these.
But for my needs and for my own family's needs, I think this is good enough to get us back and forth to the ER, uh, go to the ER in the event that we need to leave camp and go somewhere. This will help at least keep us stable until then. And then for the minor stuff, I got this little tiny one. Whenever my son just needs a Band-Aid or something, you know, and he says, hey, Daddy, can you give me this? And I can just reach and grab it without having to go through the whole kit. So that's why this kit works for me. Sounds pretty You're not going to have any complaints about role assignment. Yeah. That is the most important part. Yeah. Of well, any, um, when chaos hits, knowing what your role is is, yep. the, is, is one of the more important things. Yeah. Um, you know, someone is going to be well-versed in this stuff more than you might be, you know, or in other areas. So having different people in your crew that knows what they're doing in that particular area is what's going to be really helpful out there. I mean, even not just camping overlanding. If for some reason there was some apocalyptic event that happened and you all have to get together and, and have a compound Right. <laughs> there's the guy who is like, you know, right. You, you watch The Walking Dead every season. There's the medic. Everyone has a medic. And so someone will have all that taken care of. But for the average Joe like myself, uh, for some of you who are your average, you just want a good first aid kit. I think this is a great system to have one that is in the back of the vehicle for big things. And then one that's closer to you when you just need something really simple. Um, I did want to thank Treadless for sending this over. If you are interested in this kit or even the bigger kits that they have, head on over to treadless.com. They specialize in survival gear. They, they specialize in camping and outdoor gear. They have everything from rooftop tents to first aid kits to portable AC units to portable power banks to uh, <laughs> even survival knives and survival axes. They have been a great partner uh, with me in doing a lot of this stuff and we're working on even more collaborations coming up in the winter So if you're going to buy a first aid kit, especially a my medic one and you want to go to a mom-and-pop Shop that will take care of you where their customer service you can reach them really easily head on over to treadless.com I do want to thank TJ for sending us over great guy over there at treadless. So yeah, Thank you, uh, BJ. I almost called him doctor. See, I told you, it's not like being called doctor. Thank you, BJ, for auditing my first aid kits for me. Happy to do it. Um, so I think it's complete, right? Uh, there's nothing really... Oh, it's we... definitely complete. Cool. So this is not bursting at the seams yet, but I'll get into <laughs> that when I add my own personal stuff on it. But that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoy this content, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel. Also consider following me on Patreon and supporting us there so that we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. I put it on your shirt. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. Wait, you have a Patreon?